So, as most of you know, the foreclosure legislation is winding its way through the uh, Florida legislature right now. And um, it's apparent that the leadership um, has decided that this is an, an important priority um, and that they want to see this thing pushed through. Now, whether in fact that happens or not remains to be seen. Um, the uh, important stakeholders haven't all entirely weighed in. What is clear from my perspective is the uh, current version of the legislation which uh, has a file date of February 21st at 649 and which I'll attach to this post uh, still has many significant technical problems. Um, from a policy standpoint, the, the legislators are looking big picture. They feel they need to do something. They feel that this legislation will do something. Um, but from a technical standpoint, a legal standpoint, there are many, many problems that exist in here. Whether they pick up on that and, and frankly, whether they care, that remains to be seen. But at this point in time, this appears to be the piece that is going to get moving forward. Now, two important points that should always be emphasized. Number one, um, this legislation um, is not going to address the, the broad range of problems that exist in our court system. Um, and that can just keeps getting kicked down the, the road and nobody seems to have the political uh, wherewithal to do anything about that. Number two, um, this legislation will not um, significantly address the problems that exist. Uh, in the state, in my county, Pinellas, there's 28,000 or so foreclosure cases pending. And as I work through the language in here, I, I just don't see where uh, there's much in here that's going to address that problem. Um, they're, they're playing uh, a bit of distraction where they're discussing that this bill will do something demonstrable to impact abandoned properties, but the fact of the matter is that that's an absolute red herring. Uh, if property are abandoned, um, the plaintiffs already have the tools they need to move that uh uh, legis the new move that lawsuit through to get a judgment pretty quickly and there's simply no need to uh, write this new legislation um, in that particular section dealing with abandoned properties it has some pretty significant um, problems with it but hey I, I feel like in many ways we're the kids sitting down at the end of the table and the adults are sitting up at the top deciding what they think um, is, is going to what they need to do w without frankly much care or concern for what happens out here on the street having said that um, there is one line that we should focus on, which uh, if this line gets changed, uh, will have a pretty significant impact on this piece of legislation and will remove a lot of the objections that consumers and attorneys should have to one particular provision. I want to draw everyone's attention to line 222. Um, this is in the order to show cause section, and it says uh, if you file anything, if you respond in that case, uh, defending that case, going into the courtroom, um, may constitute and may preclude entry of a final judgment. Uh, that's the way it reads right now. If two words are removed, if the language reads, if you file a pleading, and then be picking up at line 22, filing such a pleading will constitute and will preclude entry of a final judgment at the hearing to show cause, that will have a dramatic effect on this legislation which will speak to many of the concerns that the consumer community and the legal community has. This is very simple. All it says is if you uh, folks are serious about wanting to just push through cases, fine. Focus on the cases where there are nobody defending it and then let us take care of the cases where homeowners are defending it, where, ho where attorneys and homeowners are raising real defenses. That can be accomplished with two words, two simple words, replacing may with shall in line 22. If that occurs in this legislation, allow the banks and the title companies and the homeowners associations, if they will, if they want to, to uh, participate in this new show cause proceeding and see what happens. Um, I predict that it's going to be problematic, but nevertheless, um, in a... Um, in response and in deference to these interest groups that feel like they need to do something, let us all focus on line 222, change that to will constitute and will preclude entry of summary judgment, and for the next year, allow this piece of legislation to, to work its way into our court system and into the fabric of cases, and let's just see what happens. Um, again, I will predict to you that at the uh, end of 2013, or I guess when 2013 session rolls around again, we're going to be at this again. 
because this particular piece of legislation is a mess in so many ways, but that's for the adults up at the top of the table to, to sort out and figure out. That's for the title companies to trade off between themselves and the banks to trade off between themselves and the condo and homeowners association. From a consumer perspective, if we focus on line 222, all we're asking for is two words, people. Give us two words at line 222 and then have at it with the rest of it. Um, I encourage all of you to remain involved in the process, frustrating as it is. Uh, treat our legislators with dignity and respect. They're uh, laboring under very difficult circumstances and, and doing what they can to try and address problems that, frankly, are beyond their control. Um, I will just say in closing that what is missed in this debate and, and the thing that needs to be focused on is the failure to respond to the interests of consumers and constituents who understand that they have been abused uh, most uh, vigorously throughout this entire process. And the sense of betrayal and the sense of um, uh, hurt that they experience and suffer um, is being ignored. And it's being ignored to the peril of all of us, especially our uh, government elected officials, judges. There needs to be some recognition that the concerns that consumers have about the fraud, about the forgery, about the lies and deceit has gone unredressed. There has been no punishment and now it's like the, the 800 pound gorilla sitting in the middle of the room where we all know this exists, we all know it continues to plague our court system and yet nobody is willing to do anything about it. In fact, nobody's willing to have the conversation now. Um, so I would urge all of our policymakers, all of our legislators, and frankly our judges, to keep focused on that. If you want to pass this legislation, fine. Pass the legislation, have at it. But let us think about the cases that are pending in Florida's court system right now, some estimates 360,000 or whatever it is, and understand that the, the vast majority of those cases have some serious problems with them, both from a technical problem, the pleadings are, are a mess, uh, and then from an evidentiary standpoint with the, the improper and perhaps fraudulent or forged endorsements and uh, assignments of mortgage and other documentation that exists in those files. What should happen with those cases is the cases should be dismissed. It's not a free home. It's not a, a giveaway to the homeowner. The cases need to be dismissed and give the law firms and the banks an opportunity to refile those cases um, and get their job done correctly. Will there be expenses and costs? Yes. Uh, there will be new filing fees. But frankly, that is a consequence that should be borne by the industries that cause these problems. Uh, as a taxpayer, as a voter, I'm disturbed by the abuse that I see heaped on our court system where these filings, which were improper from the beginning, um, still clog our court system. And the way to seek recompense, the way that our legislators and policymakers make a point about this, is we use the existing laws and rules of court to dismiss those cases and allow the banks and institutions to turn around and refile them and let them be done correctly. So two things. Dismiss the existing cases based on the existing rules and procedures so that they're done correctly and there aren't the problems that exist with them now, number one. Number two, and most importantly from a legislative standpoint, focus on 222. The word of the day is two words, line 222. Excise those words, replace it with will, and uh, that will dramatically change the uh, tenor of the, the debate regarding this legislation.